Hello everybody, I'm Mikey. And I'm Corey. Every week we discuss and review a new book, movie, album, TV show, or honestly any piece of art or culture that ourselves and you guys choose. This is Mind Control. Mind control. So there was these people who were being kidnapped and, and, and mind controlled. And... Exactly, dude. And I can totally see how that happened. Because like, imagine if you were just given acid or just drugs like that that are so disorienting for hours and hours on end and never being able to come down and not feeling safe and you, having somebody tell you things and accuse you of things, you know? Yeah. Mind control. That's how we do it, baby. GG. Mind control. Welcome back to Mind Control. On this week's episode, we're going to be discussing the Brian C. Murarescu book, The Immortality Key, The Secret History of the Religion with No Name, with a foreword by Graham Hancock. And on next week's episode, we're going to be discussing the 2009 Gaspar Noé film, Enter the Void. Did the ancient Greeks use drugs to find God? And did the earliest Christians inherit the same secret tradition? The Immortality Key is a groundbreaking dive into the role psychedelics have played in the origins of Western civilization and the real-life quest for the Holy Grail that could shake the church to its foundations. This is The Immortality Key, the secret history of the religion with no name. <laughs> Look at red sweater foos. I know. Uh, yeah, funny. red crew. Uh, all right. What's up, everybody? Hi. Welcome back. Uh, when are we releasing this? I don't know. Sometimes towards uh, early December. December 1st. The last episode we did was in uh, October, right? The Exorcist? Oh, my God. It's been a month. Yeah, bro. It's been a month. Damn, it's been a while. That's crazy. It, it feels like it's been a month, too. Yeah. I, and for, take, uh, I put For those who can't see, I put on the hood, but then I uh, made my head look a little too big, so... Uh, <laughs> take it back off right now you see ninja is releasing uh hoodies that have like these like type of holes in the hood so you could have headphones over your hood and still hear that's uh, i could do that too i go grab the scissors right now bro <laughs> <laughs> i could change this hoodie real quick that's true <laughs> fucking ninja over there nah, that's scissors. cool uh, they were nah. pretty cool um yeah so obviously a big reason why it took us so long to release this episode is because of the content uh this weeks or this episode we decided to do a book by brian c murarescu that's not how you say it, brian c murarescu uh called the immortality key the secret history of the religion with no name um bro you're you're definitely smarter than me for sure so i would <laughs> like to hear like how would you briefly explain or describe what this book's about how would you do it I've been working yeah. on it in my head for a while and I could give my yeah. explanation, but I'm curious what you're going to say. I would say that it's about, um, it's about well, religion in general and mostly Christianity, but basically all religion mm -hmm. and that how it all sprang up from maybe not psychedelics. Like as we, I mean, they probably do. I mean, there's no hard evidence yet for that, but maybe not the psychedelics that we've done, but definitely <laughs> psychoactive. <laughs> experiences out of body experiences just things like that you know things of that nature are what birth this whole <laughs> what we call religion today like you know and, and and it's very much about how at one time these especially like in christianity the, the sacraments like the mm -hmm. blood and body of christ that we still do to this day that really don't have any meaning other than what they're they're called the blood and body of christ that back then they used to have some meaning some purpose they used mm -hmm. to have some ingredient they would send these people and then it's very it's just um the book just uh brings up a lot of uh similarities between yeah. what between uh the psilocybin studies now uh -huh. and how people's experiences on psilocybin even today still mirror somehow these same experiences that people were having thousands of years ago. Yeah. And some of this stuff somehow managed to survive without written language. And he's just saying that basically that, you know, religion, it's, it's very possible that this is the whole reason we have religion to begin with. Yeah. And that it's interesting that we get everything else from Greece and the Greeks and Latin, but not religion that came from the Romans. Like, why would that be other than the fact that, you know, they've mm -hmm. stomped it out and kind of made it a watered down version. Like the religion's not, it's not uh, completely different than what it used to be, but now it's like a watered down version mm -hmm. of what it should be. You know, it's so it's so complicated. It's hard to describe. Though. It's so yeah, yeah it's dude. So I'm telling you, I, it's so many different topics that that come up in this book. 
from, you know, uh, the possibility of there being a secret sacrament used in the early days of Christianity, that the idea of the original Eucharist, is, which is what people used uh, for communion, being some sort of a psychedelic, uh, the idea that uh, even before uh, ancient Egypt, there were uh, in a, there was an intelligent civilization or something. There was there is so many different concepts that come up in this book. It's very very hard to to describe it. But I wanted to work on it so I could kind of describe it to people, want to talk to them and stuff like that. And kind of what I came up with is what this book in particular does is use actual scientific evidence to present the case that. There was a psychedelic sacrament which was used in the origins of Christianity and the modern world today. And that uh, uh, a psychedelic spiked beer or wine was used um, from possibly the beginning, early, early, early stages of man and our evolution on top of the fucking bedrock of our religion of our DNA is basically just infused with psychedelic analogs and things that we use for years. And he presents these ideas while using archaeochemistry and actual scientific evidence to try to present the case. And he, I believe found actual scientific, yeah, he did find scientific evidence of not only a spiked uh, beer with that was spiked with ergot, but uh, I believe that they found a, uh, uh, evidence of spiked wine as well and the spiked wine one i'm not too like solid on but he found actual evidence and um it's it's i believe one of the first books that truly kind of like wrapped everything up in a pretty package and presented actual evidence yeah no uh i like how you made me give my uh shoddy summary first <laughs> And then, you, and then, and then you hit us with a real summary. So yeah, I would say that's a much. Better I thought you were. I, I, I've been working on it, bro, for weeks. I figured you had the summary, so I haven't even thought of a uh, way to summarize. I'm sorry, it. Right though, about I, was, I was talking to Ricardo about it the other night, and I was like struggling to find the words to like describe exactly mm -hmm. what it's about. You know, uh -huh. that's perfect. Yeah. yeah so. And uh, but with the wine thing, what you said, they they did find evidence of the spiked wine, but mm -hmm. I think. They don't know what, though, in it might have been psychoactive, but they found that it was spiked with several different things mm -hmm. that we don't normally put in wine today. Yeah. That, you know, and some of them are because that's what, one of the big things I feel like of the book, too, is that a lot of it has to do with language and that maybe mm -hmm. that their language for certain plants isn't exactly the same as ours. So the plant, I think species I may vary like the juniper, like mm -hmm. they talk about juniper a lot, how juniper is some species of juniper are not, there's no psychoactive properties at all. But then some juniper, there actually is uses for it. Yeah. So it's like, that's one of the big ambiguous things. It's like, which mm -hmm. one did they use? We don't know. We do know it was a species of it, exactly. which is it, cool. But I mean, it's interesting though. It all just makes a lot of sense, you know, especially mm -hmm. when they get into like the, how the agricultural revolution might, might've been not because of bread, but because of beer, yeah. which I feel like makes a lot of sense because if you're, hunting gathering all day like are you really going to settle down just for bread but it's like it makes more sense that communities settle down because now we have something to settle around mm -hmm. we can all get drunk together or their version of drunk or mm -hmm. you know celebrate things together which before you're just trying to survive yeah. now you have some for some sort of leisure now it's like okay yeah. after i'm done i could sit down and have a beer you know yeah which is it's, interesting and i feel like makes a lot of sense actually it the whole book makes so much sense that it almost makes me worry about myself. <laughs> like in a sense of like, I don't want to be like, it was really hard to read this book in, in like a, a non-biased way and not allow like the old conspiracy theory Mikey to pop back in my head. You know what I'm saying? And just fully yeah. believe everything, no matter what, mm -hmm. but everything makes so much sense it's hard to not be like, oh, okay, yeah, well, that, yeah, that for sure happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so much evidence yeah. and it just makes so much sense. It just, this is one of those theories that after reading this book, I just got so firmly behind it and I so firmly believe it. And it just makes the most sense. You know, I've been, and real quick, just to say, so people who are listening to the podcast understand, we are not intellectuals. We're not like, you know, very, you know, deep into history or chemistry or any yeah. of this shit. We're just a couple dudes who like 
have talked about movies and books and music for our whole life and we decided to make a podcast about it that's all so don't yeah you know just <laughs> don't hold us to not to nothing crazy we're just gonna we're, honestly i think what this podcast is gonna be is more us trying to describe it to each other to try to firm to grasp, grasp it better it, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh yeah. so just keep that in mind if anyone out there is uh a Harvard graduate and, and thinking they're going to come and learn something here. Uh, yeah. These guys are idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Look at their stupid red sweaters. Uh, no, I know. That's what I was thinking about when you said uh, it would be cool to get him on the show. I was like, that'd be cool. But I was like, oh, I yeah. feel like I wouldn't want to fucking talk. Just because, <laughs> like, when I was watching the podcast, too, just the way he was. I mean, I know he prepared for that, that, uh, that <laughs> podcast for sure. But the way he was able to just throw things out like verses from the Bible, certain pages, just throw it out off the top of his head. I was just like, man, it's just so effortlessly. And when he would read the languages and just how he would yeah. go into it, I was like, oh my God, like, that's my, my crazy. Ball, you know? I got a little, little, little excited when <laughs> I went out. Yeah, a little chub. <laughs> like Jim Carrey. Oh, shit. Fucking, uh, no, nah, yeah, it, 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 the podcast is amazing. I think Brian, Brian Murrescu's story is amazing. Um, and, you know, the fact that, you know, the dude went from being a classicist, which is basically the study of languages, right? Of old languages. Yeah, languages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 then, like, and then, like, basically being like, okay, like, I have this major. What the fuck am I going to do with it? I'll just go be a lawyer. He was a lawyer for, like, 10 years. And then the fact that th that's, like, the perfect credentials for someone who's writing this book to have to be a lawyer for 10 years, to be a classicist, a major at, I don't know exactly where he went, I think Brown. And then yeah. on top of that, um, to not ever have done drugs or psychedelics. I think that's a huge fucking deal. And I think that that's why this book is such a big deal and why so many people are taking it so serious. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's, it's definitely, it definitely helps. I mean, they talk about it in the podcast too, and in the beginning of the book about how it helps that he hasn't done drugs. Cause yeah. you do see that. Like when people have done drugs, it becomes, Oh, he's just, he's a druggie, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Like you can't believe him. He look, likes these things. Look at Graham like, Hancock. Yeah, 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 Graham, in the beginning of the episode, he's talking about mother ayahuasca and how it's a woman. And it's like, I, I don't not believe him, but I could see how other people, somebody hear who, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you're just like, you've never done drugs mm -hmm. and you're not against them in a way like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And like Brian doesn't have those experiences. Mm -hmm. So it's all scientific when he talks about yeah, it, you know, exactly. It's, it's yeah, perfect. Which, I love it. I love it. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, dude, it makes me happy. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I want to watch, uh, cause you said there's one with Graham Hancock. I've never really heard too much about him before this, but, uh, well, he was on the, the episode with him. I'm sure you saw. No. Yeah. 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 Oh, but I mean, uh, didn't you say oh, there was another episode? There, there's, mul him? there's multiple episodes, uh, podcasts with him. I've watched, I think oh. I watched almost, I think there's one or two I haven't watched, but he has a few of them now. And he has one on, he has one with, um, I believe John Anthony West. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he, yeah. He has one with John Anthony talking. West and where they go into ancient Egypt and the possibility of there being civilizations before that. And like an intelligent civilization. They talk about that in this one, too, yeah. which uh, I thought was interesting how he says that, you know, because, like, I think he was saying, if I'm correct, that right now they date Egyptian society like 6,000 years mm -hmm. ago. But his team was saying, no, like, if you look at the the weathering of, like, their some the of their Sphinx. architecture. Yeah, the Sphinx. It's uh, they say they actually maybe date it to 12,000 years. And people don't yeah. want to believe that. But I was like, that'd be an interesting concept because that that just tells you that. Because, you know, a lot of things that people think about the Egyptians are like how could they have been so advanced and you know like if it was twelve thousand years ago that makes sense so maybe they were around for a super fucking long time before uh -huh. they went away just like us like yeah. maybe it's mm -hmm. like a form of us like yeah. they were around and they were prospering but then they in inevitably got destroyed you know it's it's such or an interesting whatever. yeah it's such an interesting topic so so i went real deep into this idea and and to briefly talk about it because i don't know too much about it but in the podcast i've heard is that there is a lot of evidence mostly underwater that show a lot of like what look like man-made structures in japan underwater there is uh what looks like kind of like stairs and it, it and it and they're like fucking i like that 12,000 13,000 years old um yeah. but it looks like man-made stuff and um it's it's in and i guess now in the last few years or whatever with uh, science, it has become 
a fact that about what was it like 30,000 years ago or th- something or 13,000 like a long like more than 6,000 before ancient Egypt there was a catastrophe some sort of a meteor hit or something crazy happened to where it I believe ended or started the ice age it was basically a huge catastrophe that was kind of a theorized but is now factual and the theory of there being a civilization before us is that that whatever catastrophe that was basically destroyed that entire civilization wiped it out and that there was only very, very minor things that were uh, held from that. And most of it was verbal, uh, you know, things that were passed on through word of mouth, through generations. And that's kind of a big reason. or uh, That's why the ancient Egyptians had such weird and intelligent technology, but there's no like anything written down about it. And there's no history of it because it was all wiped clean and through word of mouth is what I'm understanding. And yeah, uh, it's 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 crazy to think because there's a lot of shit about ancient Egypt that we still don't understand how they did it. Like there's tunnels yeah. that are like miles long that there's no way they could have lit that they could have seen. I don't know if you ever knew that there's tunnels that are like super long in like in the pyramids where there's no way that they they could have illuminated it. You couldn't have taken a torch in there because there's no ox not enough oxygen. It would have went out. Yeah, they, they say that you could have used mirrors that maybe, but there was like, there's no way for that. So there's some way that these guys illuminated these mile long tunnels underneath the pyramids, and we have no idea how. So there's this like weird intelligence that we don't understand, and that is totally lost. And it's such an interesting fucking mystery. No, league. yeah, it's so crazy to think about. I feel like we uh, talked about maybe we maybe just another time, but I feel like we talked about this in a podcast too. Like how mm. like maybe we didn't. Maybe it was just some random conversation. But I feel like we've talked about, about it before. Like, I don't know. About yeah, it. I feel like during the Father John maybe, but mm. like how why why would we think that we're the first? You know, like the Earth's yeah. been here so long. Why would we think that? I mean, because what they they technically what is it? they date the Earth like four point like six billion years or something Mm -hmm. so like the planet's been here that long what makes you like why would we think and assume that we're the first intelligent species like you know Mm -hmm. like there could have been like you said there could have been these egyptians could have been just as as intelligent if not more so intelligent Mm -hmm. and then they were just wiped out and because there's no evidence of it we assume that we're the first you know Mm -hmm. and like the first at this level at least you know but uh it's crazy to think about yeah it's 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 I, 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 what, another thing that put things in a perspective as far as one, one, okay. I am falling in love with history, bro. Like the history, the, the, the mystery of where men came from of ancient yeah. Egypt and this lost civilization. I've just gotten so obsessed with it, bro. I've literally listened to like hours of podcasts, just going in on it. But, um, so I'm really happy that I'm getting into it and it's like, I, like a new thing I can get into. Um, but fuck, I lost my train of thought. Uh, you were talking about history and how you've been getting into it. And we were talking about the Egyptians before that. <laughs> yeah, I forgot what I was bringing up. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, but you're <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot. You know, if, you, yeah, if you remember, let me know. I will. But uh, um, yeah, dude, the the Egyptians is uh, it's it's crazy, too. That, that was one of the big things, too, is that how this um, – religion with no name is the way they describe it Mm -hmm. is how it did spread across different communities in different places around the world with no written word you know and it's like and it's crazy though the egyptians because i remember watching that um that zeitgeist uh Mm -hmm. remember that movie the documentary Mm -hmm. i remember they talk about how like christianity and a lot of the symbols and symbolism actually comes from old egyptian uh religion Mm -hmm. you know and uh it's just it's just interesting, you know, because this book starts out with Greece, but then eventually they do get into Egyptians and like, oh, man, like maybe this was even before Greece, you know, yeah. and like it's just traveled by word of mouth. And one of the things I thought, I mean, if you don't have anything else to say about that, but one of the things that I was most interesting is that how women were were the priestesses and, mm. and, and it makes a lot of sense, you know, yeah. when you think about Mother Earth, Mother Ayahuasca, mm. just, just all that shit. It's like it makes sense that women would have been the ones running this. You that know? Was, that and then was if you, during Dion, Dionysus times, right? That the yeah. And the then you, I think Egyptian though, too, or maybe, or maybe not, but I, I know for I sure know. during Dionysus. Yeah. yeah. And, and earlier and like what paleo Christianity. Mm. So the beginning of Christianity, they were too. Yes. But uh, <clears throat> it makes a lot of sense too, because like, I mean, if you were to think about 
going from hunting gathering to agriculture like when when you do learn about it in school you learn that the men were out there hunting and gathering Mm -hmm. and the women were at home tending the plants growing things making stuff with that you know so it would that would make sense and like interchange with the idea that yeah they were also the ones preparing these uh psychedelic drinks and stuff because they were the ones that were aware of what these plants could do because they're the ones who worked with them Mm -hmm. while the men went out and hunted and did stuff like that they were there working with these different spices different herbs figuring out what they did and it's dude that that was the craziest thing it made me really want to study like botany i was like dude i wish i knew more about plants yeah just because of the way they describe them and then when they get into that one guy um dioscortes Mm -hmm. the the father of drugs like it's Mm -hmm. crazy that he wrote that book and when I think they said fifth century BC, and yeah. it pretty much details all these different wine concoctions you can make. Oh, I feel like right there, that's evidence right there say. that they knew what they were doing because oh, yeah. he talks about in the book. How did they know? Oh, this is the dose you use. If you use too much, you might die. It's like they obviously experimented and tried these things. They I'm had, pretty sure he didn't make this shit up. They had such a vast knowledge of of what's it what did you uh bot- botany uh, or just like uh, yeah uh, or whatever yeah uh, f- yeah ph- no, pharmaceuticals I- like they knew they had a fucking super advanced intelligence of it and it's it's kind of more intelligent than we have now like i don't know many people who could spike fucking wine with ergot like you know what i'm saying like but they were doing that shit back then it's just it's wild to me and you know what's funny what you talk about with women uh it reminds me of that uh uh, Father John line when he says uh, talk about Christianity he says he says uh, that was created by women hating epileptics uh, written yeah. written by women yeah he says uh, written by women hating epileptic it's in it's in pure comedy he yeah says, it is uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so that's kind of what he's talking about and it's it's so interesting to me that Christianity as it stands now, they hold themselves. Okay. This is probably a whole nother thing, but and we can get yeah. deep into that. And, and, and I have a lot to say about Christianity, psychedelics, the whole idea of it all. Obviously, yeah. you know, and for, but for those who don't know, I grew up very strictly Christian. My dad was a pastor and you know, I, and then until sixth grade or so, and then I started doing psychedelics pretty, uh, consistently around, you know, 17, 18 years old, 19 years old, something like that. Um, yeah. But I always found these weird connections and, 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 and similarities. And I had always, even back then, talked about how similar it felt being in like church and like being in altar calls and, and praise and worshiping God and, and crying. And the similar feeling of that compared to when I'm on psychedelics talking and, and like with people and at raves or, you know, I've literally had the same emotion through Christianity as I have through psychedelics. And I've always noticed similarities. And for this book to come out, it was just like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, okay. So it just, it makes a lot of sense, but it also, what it does for me kind of, it feels like it just re like reinstates my state of mind since I was a child that there's so much good in Christianity. There's beauty in it, but it's fucking full of lies and bullshit and ego. And it's just, it's so tarnished, but there's like this soul to it that is beautiful. And I think that it's that Christianity is kind of what a religion in a sense is what I'm, what I'm starting to learn is religion is not necessarily something you believe in, but it's something you do. And it's kind of a a practice. It's a practice. It's a value you hold. And I'm starting to understand that and understanding that I think I could say that I've been a Christian since I was a little boy because I hold myself to those same standards for the most part. Like, you know, uh, the 10 commandments, you know, things like that. Don't get me wrong. I fuck up a lot, but I, in my heart and soul, I'm like, Oh, I hold myself to those Christian standards to this day. Like, yeah, you know, and but yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. Go, go, go ahead. No, I'm just saying it's just, it's just wild to me that this book, which kind of destroys the myth of Christianity and destroys the origin of it and kind of really shows you, that Christianity is not this fucking fairy tale system that you can engage in and then just have everlasting life just by, you know, doing what Jesus says. And, and, and if not, you're going to be tortured for eternity in hell. If you don't do it, you know, this, the, the fairy tale themes to it are bullshit. And this book proved it. And even though the book proved that it kind of still 
like kind of like ushered me towards Christianity even more. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, I, I can see what you're saying, but I also feel like, uh, I feel like that's what he's talking about in the book too, that like Christianity, like that part that you're talking about, like the moral aspect of mm-hmm. it and that code, like that moral, that morality aspect of it comes from mm-hmm. the psychedelics that came before, you know, like, because, and it makes sense too. Cause if you look at like, I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie. We're still pieces of shit as humans, but I feel mm-hmm. like if you look at the past, it was much more brutal in a way. And I feel like it would make sense that these psychedelics is what kind of helped calm it down, you know? Cause yep. at least for me, I, I forgot who I was talking about this with, but I was talking to somebody about it. And I was like, at least for me, every time I've taken a psychedelic, no matter how far out I've been, I've never had the tendency to be violent or want to do anybody harm. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, on a psychedelic, I it's almost the complete opposite. Like mm-hmm. I want to be as kind and loving to everybody I encounter you know, like mm-hmm. it almost instills this this moral code that we believe comes from like religion that taught us this morality. But I feel like it could be very well that these plants taught us morality and that we need to love each other and mm-hmm. the earth. And, you know, because you've, you've done it when you come off of mushrooms, like you feel like, fuck it. Like, you know, even the people who wronged you, you're like, whatever they, you know, just live mm-hmm. your life. You know, it's yep. like it's just so it's like. So like what you're saying, I guess, is. is is uh, I get it, mm-hmm. but you know, like it makes me think too. Like, does that morality code and those Ten Commandments does that come because of Christianity, or does that come because no, it come, of the I, holy the the psychedelic I, Eucharist I, and everything that came before it? I know? think I think what crea- Christianity kind of is is an enveloping of many different cultures, uh, an enveloping of many different beliefs, an enveloping of many different psychedelic experiences and lessons learned from those psychedelic experiences over thousands of years during Greek Greek times, ancient Egyptian times, maybe before that, after that and Christianity kind of, and I'm not saying this for a fact, but it seems to me like Christianity kind of got enveloped all those different things that were learned through all those different experiences and through those different people and, and became kind of the, the fucking, walmart version of that and on the surface yeah. you can learn you know you, you know for the for the for the everyday person christianity is is a psychedelic learn learning experience but for the regular person and it's a it bit true. much you know it, you know you learn for the most part you learn the same lessons as you would in a psychedelic experience <coughs> yeah but in just a super watered down version and I think that because it's hard to learn from a story, you exactly. know, versus an experience. I think exactly. he talks about well, that in the beginning. Well, like you can read the scripture, but experiencing the scripture mm, is way different. Exactly. It's a way different thing. And yeah. that's what's so wild. But at the same time, when you say that, like, okay, look, I experienced if you talk to a Christian person and you're like, look, I understand I have yeah. the same morals as you. We believe the same things, but I learned my experiences through psychedelic and a psychedelic experience or through this. And what they're gonna say, because I've had these conversations, is they're gonna say that a psychedelic experience is, is, is bullshit. It's, it's fictitious. It's not real. It's artificial. And how can you learn from such a fake experience? It's not real learning. And that's their yeah. argument. And to me, it's like, then what is your fucking learning? You're talking about a, a, a fairy tale and you're mm-hmm. going around telling people if they don't believe in your fairy tale, they're going to be tortured for the rest of their lives. And so is all their family. That's it's, it's not, it's not cut and dry on either side, but it's very, very interesting to discuss. And I think that when it comes to like uh, morality and values and stuff like that, I would say that I'm, I've been Christian for a long time. It's super weird. It's super weird. Yeah. yeah I no, I, 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 I understand <laughs> that. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, yeah. But, but like what you said is that how Christianity and the lessons learned in it were inspired by psychedelic, psychedelic experiences makes yeah. so much sense. And in a sense, like, I would say that Christianity is maybe not my exact religion, def, 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 like definitively, but more so than anything else. And if anything, the religion that I'm really a part of is the secret religion with no name. No, yeah, dude. Uh, it's <laughs> like what you said too about how when you tell, um, like if you have this conversation with someone who's religious and they write it off as that, I think Graham Hancock talked about that too in the mm-hmm. podcast where he was saying, oh, yeah. Like, People have, or maybe it was Brian, but people have this hard time believing, like, 
oh, you you took this psychedelic and now now you understand like that's too easy. Like it's obviously bullshit. But it's like, nah, like it's it's not, you know, Mm -hmm. and I think they talk about that, like learn what you're going to learn. And then I don't remember if it was in the book or something, but I read this somewhere, like learn what you're going to learn from the psychedelics and then and then quit, you know, like, Mm -hmm. you know, when you get the when you get the message, you get the the message. Yeah. Hang up the phone, you know, and it's like, but people have a hard time to believe. How can you get a message out of a drug? Because that's what we've labeled them as a drug. And Mm -hmm. like people would think about acid or mushrooms, people who haven't done it, stuff like that, they'll 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 category categorize them Mm -hmm. as like um like cocaine or something like Mm -hmm. that or heroin things that you know are way different you know and it's like uh it's i feel like they're not even on the same pedestal you know like you couldn't really it's just like now we're 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 slowly stopping the idea that weed is just some drug you know Mm. which is barely kind of coming around now which it is now because it's being legalized Mm. but it's like we need to get to that space with yeah. mushrooms and stuff like that that these aren't these aren't drug drugs in the the sense that we all think of drugs like these yeah. are almost like tools you know mm-hmm. they're, they're tools to to help you learn about yourself yep. and i like how he said that too like you know he talked about it on the podcast which i thought was interesting and honestly made me look back at how i used to use psychedelics which was a lot of times in fun settings and shit like that mm-hmm. but then the way he talked about it like you know if you use them the way they're supposed to be used it's actually not always the most pleasant it's hard work you know like it's work like you know people think oh you're just doing drugs and getting on your mind but he's like if you use them for what these people in this book and what we're describing that they were used for like this isn't just your everyday thing this Mm -hmm. is like this is work this is mental work this is you sitting down and going through your life Mm -hmm. and really thinking about it no matter how painful it is to change yourself you know yeah and i was like yeah that's interesting because like at least from when we used to do them it was very party fun i mean towards the end i feel like we started to understand it wasn't that but yeah. it's like i feel like for a lot of people today it still is but i like the way he talked about it he's like you know if you do them the right way it's 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 not that this is work mm-hmm. this is something you need to mentally prepare for yeah. and realize it might not even be fun it might be terrible but if you use it the right way you're gonna come out of it with something even if it's scary during you know yep. Like Joe Rogan even said, I like how he's like, I'm still scared every time I do it, you know? And I was like, that's the right response. Like you should be, you shouldn't be going into it thinking it's going to be easy. Fear, fear, you know, fear is one of the most healthy feelings you could feel in my opinion. Mm -hmm. If you're you're, going into that. Yeah. If you're, if you're trying to approach anything and acting as if you'd have no fear, you're lying to yourself and you're lost already. And it's, uh, to me, it's, uh, like you said about psychedelics being tools. Like I think about, them like a hammer right like if you have a hammer you could fucking destroy shit you can smack your fucking self in the head with it you can you can just fuck some shit up with a hammer or you could build a house you know what i'm saying you know or you could you, and i like you could, that yeah so it's like you there's a lot of different things you can do with it but it's up to you with what you do with it and uh one one thing that i i, I learned recently or i, I kind of put things into perspective for me is like uh, our society, it, it seems as if we have a problem with drugs. We have the yeah. war on drugs. It seems like we have a problem with changing our state of mind, our state of consciousness, right? Like using drugs to change our state of consciousness. But that's not mm-hmm. the problem we have because we have caffeine. We have alcohol, which is loved and ritualized. We have dr- sugar and tobacco and all these drugs. We don't. We are not against drugs. We are not against yeah. changing our perspective, but we are against the ones our, our, our society is against the the type of states of consciousness changes that affect you a certain way only. That's why you see psychedelics and um, marijuana being so fucking propagand- propagated to be hated for so long yeah. because people with power realized that these drugs took away their power and that's what it was. So it's like, the internet is changing everything. People's, uh, you know, people are changing and it's, it's beautiful to see. You look at fucking Oregon. You can go shoot heroin in your arm in Oregon and you'll be chilling. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just, just chilling. Just chilling but dude, for a while. And that, I know. That shit's crazy. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, dude, they talk about that in the book too. Like I actually didn't know this. That I like how he talks about like the war on drugs really actually started when the Romans came in and tried mm-hmm. to Christianize everything. But then even so, like in like what we think of as the U.S. now, what is the U.S.? Like it started in, I think they said 1912 with the ban on peyote. And it's Mm. like such an interesting drug 
that that was the first one that you're going to go in and ban is this one that's used for religious purposes mm -hmm. by these people who aren't following your religion. And it, so it like makes a lot of sense. It's like, that's why they go after those things so hard. Like you said, they, they change your consciousness. They, they cause you to think against the grain yep. and it's like, you know, and it's uh, up until what I feel like up until now, like they talk in the book, it has been a very Christian and Catholic world, at least on our side of the planet, you know, yeah. like it's very dominated by that. Cause up until like, up until now, I mean, fuck dude, even the president, when you win, you still get sworn in on a Bible. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's like, by far you Christianity know, it, is the most popular religion in the world and it's only getting bigger. And it's, um, well, I mean, I like though in the book though, they talk about how though a oh. lot of people though, like 60% of people now though, even though even the followers don't fully believe mm -hmm. in the story anymore quite as they used to, which I think is interesting, you know? So the, I know that you get in, you're like into Greek mythology, history and stuff yeah. like that, right? So you, this idea of myth and myth being a part of that, like, do you know what I'm talking about when I say that at all? And myth being yeah. according to religion and stuff like that and like coinciding with the yeah, religion? Well, uh, yeah, no, well, are you talking about how um, they say like, how a lot of the things from myth were kind of adopted. Is that what you mean? Like into Christianity or what do you no, mean? No. Well, okay. So I guess w these are weird, crazy concepts. I'm barely able to hold on to because of these podcasts. No, dude, but, they're there. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. But I guess myth is, is, and, 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 and myth in, in accordance with religion is necessary when it comes to religion. Um, I guess like, if you think about, do you, you know what I'm saying now? Or, or, or yeah, 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 yeah. And how yeah. like, 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 let's say like this, the religion of boot of, uh, Buddhism, you know, you have the, the myth of Buddha and all the different things that happen there. And you have the myth of Christianity and you have Jesus Christ and the miracles and Jonah and the whale and Noah's Ark and all these mythological thematic themes that are there within religion to tell, to give, and it kind of goes back to Greek, uh, gods and stuff like that. So the stories are there to, pr to present lessons to be learned oh yeah by the masses so it's easily consumed yeah well uh yeah that's what um i think that's what i was telling you in the text the other day mm -hmm. uh something like that yeah i mean because when i learned about it that's how we learned is that you know back then especially when religion was first starting out and science was still relatively new there wasn't a lot of explanations for everything and yeah. myth was one way almost like an early science mm -hmm. of describing these things you know mm -hmm. like even though we know now that hercules being thrown across the sky and spitting out titty milk everywhere wasn't how the milky way came to be but for them that was an interesting you know yeah. it, maybe they didn't fully believe in it but it was a way to describe yes the world around them before there was really a science or anything to actually test this. So it was a way to put the world in order, I think for the normal person, you know, at least the normal person at the time, you know? Exactly. Yes. So like myth is like, like yeah, exactly what you said. Yeah. So like, think about yeah. it in a sense of Christianity, like the myth of Christianity, the myth of Buddhism, the myth of um, other religions. There's always this myth that goes along with them, you know, uh, whatever. Um, yeah. And the argument, is that the myth of Christianity is outdated and nobody fucks with it anymore because it's just outdated. And for years, hundreds, thousands of years, people believed these myths and they were like, okay, but now with the age of technology and the internet, that myth is kind of falling apart and maybe Christianity or the religion with no name needs a new myth to truly grow and become a legitimate religion because if not for that myth the masses are not going to give it a chance and and get to this point of years of psychedelic experiences like we are reading books no but not many people are going to do that never ever 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 are that many people going to do that that's why you yeah. need these myths to do it and it's like it's i think that mm -hmm. christianity I've, and religion this religion with no name needs a new myth yeah no, I that no, I get what you're saying. Yeah, because it's outdated and people don't believe in it. And honestly, most of it's a lot of it's bullshit. Like, OK, so for me, though, this is a uh, one thing that I did like about the book. Uh, <clears throat> I was telling Frankie, too. But, um, you know, for me, like, I'm not religious. Like, I, I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm completely atheistic either. Where I don't believe in anything. But it's like what he talks about. It's more like, if anything, it's more of a spiritual thing than it is a religious thing. Mm -hmm. But I would say, though, this book, after reading it, 
although I'm still not, I wouldn't say Christian <laughs> or Catholic or anything like that. I still don't really believe. I just don't believe in that because like when you, when you come down to Christianity or Catholicism or any of those religions, mm-hmm. like you said, I wouldn't even say that it's a religion. It's more now. So it's an institution, which is not the same thing. You know, mm-hmm. an institution is like, it's like a business, you know, mm-hmm. C- Christianity, Catholicism, it's an institution versus a religion. Now it's, it's a, it's a story, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of bureaucracy. There's a lot of, politics in it all Mm -hmm. and there shouldn't be you know um but this book did even though it didn't change my mind about any of that it did change my mind i swear dude i've always i I, i've always thought of i I don't want to say like no like i've always thought that jesus i was like oh it's kind of a lame story it's kind of you know like even with the crucifixion i was like eh, whatever (laughs) but dude after like reading this and about the way he describes Jesus, I'm like, Mm -hmm. bro, Jesus sounds like a badass motherfucker. (laughs) Like, I like how they describe, because I've heard other people talk about him in this way before, too. I actually read a book called The Master and the Margarita, and they talk about Uh it's written, yeah, it was written in, um, it's a Russian book, but uh, it was written, I forget when, around, like, Stalin's time, and it's, um, because at the time, Russia was very atheistic, uh, and this dude who wrote it was actually a little religious, so he wrote it about it. But even in that book, even though he's religious, they talk about Jesus similar to how they talk about to him in this book mm. as not this religious spiritual man. More, he was a philosopher. He was um, a healer. He was a revolutionary. You know, mm-hmm. like he wasn't like. I mean, because I know the Bible talks about him a little bit that way. But, you know, at least from my perspective, as somebody who wasn't super religious to begin with, I've always thought of Jesus as this man who comes and he does all these uh, spiritual, magical works and impresses everybody. And, yeah, the, the like a lot of people hated him, but a lot of people loved him. But then when I read this, I was like, oh, this makes a lot more sense. It's like he was very persecuted for his time because it was like they talk about um, at even the mystery of Ulysses, which is how this starts. They talk about how even though it was a religion with no name and it was awesome, it was reserved for this one percent. It was reserved for the top tier people in the world. But then a lot Dionysus of- did it first. Yeah, Dionysus did it first. Mm-hmm. And then with the women and just everybody. And then Jesus kind of picked up like, no, you don't you don't need to be part of this big religion. Like we could do it in your house. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like I can show you how to do it by yourself. And I like that. That description of Jesus for me makes him seem like a much more. Uh, badass. A much more respect. Yeah, badass. <laughs> and somebody that I actually could see myself revering and respecting because I, I get that. Like, it was like, okay. And, and I like how they talk about the Gnostic, the Gnostic books that aren't mm-hmm. really mentioned about how their idea wasn't much different than Christianity. Their essential idea, though, the only difference was that, well, Christianity teaches you follow these rules, follow this, and you'll go to heaven, blah, blah, blah. The Gnostics and what Jesus, at least what he says, was actually trying to teach you is no, like, don't worship me. Fuck, me. I can be your teacher. Yeah, I can be your teacher. I can teach you what you need to know. And then you can go off and you can do it yourself and teach somebody what they need to know. But instead, it's become this Jesus and God are the center of it. We're always going to worship him. But I feel like when I read it, what I got was exactly that. It's like, well, no, like, that's not what he wanted to be. He didn't want to be revered. He wanted to be like, I'm going to show you that you have God in you, too. And then we all have God in us and there's no reason, you know, let me say this though, growing up Christian, that is very talked about. Jesus is, is in it? you. Jesus is in you. You, you, you just need to invite him into you and you can have a relationship with God. You, you know, you will have happiness, eternal life. Once you accept God into your, your soul, that is a very spoken about thing, but it's not, it's not spoken, but it also has all this bullshit tagged along with it, which makes it people turned off to it because we're like, you know, all these, these bullshit stories about the Bible and things like that turn people off. But this idea of inviting God into yourself and things like that is a very, very Christian value and things that, that is very said, but it's to, it, it seems so fix, fix like artificial and, and too, way too symbolic. It doesn't really have this idea that you are God, that you are the God and you're in control yeah. of your life. And, and it, it's not as literal as that. It's more like a, uh, uh, like a, like a fable kind of idea that Jesus himself is going to f- enter your heart, you know, like that's kind of what I grew up. So it, it's kind of like, 
like what you're saying, the words you're using are, are used the right way. But I think that the symbolism and, and kind of the meaning behind it has been changed very much. So like the Christian religion in general. Um, yeah. Like it's been changed by the, by, but yeah, by like mm-hmm. the institution of Christianity. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because, so you're totally I mean, right. If you, I think they talk about it in the book too. And like, if you think about it, it makes sense. It's like, well, yeah, because th- there could be no institution of Christianity if the whole basis is, hey, you can learn to do this yourself and then you don't have to come back. You can actually just mm-hmm. end up doing, once you learn the principal concepts, you can practice this every day, uh, every day of your life by yourself yep. in your home. Yep. But it's like, if, if you taught that to people, then what's the point of going to church every Sunday? And, then and, and see, what's we, the point exactly. of, you know, uh, donating money if you can just figure this out yourself and, you know, try to be the best person you could be like, and, and, and I feel like that kind of takes away from the religion to me. Like if you don't want to teach that, then there must be something wrong with mm-hmm. it. You know, For it's, sure. it's like building an iPhone that's not meant to last. Mm-hmm. So you get, get people to keep coming back, you know, yeah, like they exactly. do with technology, you exactly. build things so they don't last, you know, exactly. That, like, is, that, shouldn't be it. that is exactly what not only the fall of Christianity was, but in my opinion, the fall of of our civilization of humanity since the ancient Egyptians, because I think that, okay, this is a weird theory and I don't know if it's, I don't think it, but think about this. There was an ancient civilization dozens of thousands of years ago, right? Super intelligent fucking, they knew weird, intelligent ways to do things. We don't even understand now. This catastrophe happened 15,000, however many thousand years ago, wiped it out. But we still had, you know, some intelligence from them. That's what the ancient Egyptians was. That's what the pyramids were and all these weird mysteries, right? Those lessons that we learned from that old civilization carried on in, you know, the in botany and learning to mix, you know, potions and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I think we remembered that. And because we remembered that, we were able to thrive and grow. And until Christianity started to think how you were saying right now about like, how are we going to be able to make money off this? How are we going to maintain this? If people are fucking, you know, doing everything in their houses, how are we going to do it? So they started killing everyone and burning everything and destroying the history that we once had burning the library of Alexandria. Christianity may have been the thing that could have truly had human beings, thrive you know the the early christian ideas and yeah. and psychedelics and those learn learning that could have been what saved us but because we're we were weak human beings we turned it on its ass and now in a sense it could be what destroys us and because we've lost so much intelligence and stuff like that uh of these you know the the medicines of god mm-hmm. and now we're so ignorant to it you know, it I don't, now with technology coming up, I don't. I think the only thing that's really going to be able to save humanity in the influx of technology and AI and all this other shit is psychedelics. And I've said this for a long time. Psychedelics is the only thing that can save the world. You know, uh, <laughs> like, no, yeah, yeah, and you know, I feel like I, I swear, I feel like for people who listen to this and haven't done psychedelics, um, like some people may. Like once we start talking about things like this, like get off track. So I'd like to say, honestly, when we first started doing psychedelics back in like high school, mm-hmm. the end of high school, for me, I always felt that way too. I always felt like Jesus Christ, like this is this is what this has been this whole time. Like why? I remember we, I think we've talked about it many mm-hmm. times back in the day. Like I wish there was a way to get everybody on this. You know, everybody needs to try this. But then after doing it a lot, and then I think maybe getting into other drugs and partying, I started. The idea started fading. Even for me, I started Mm -hmm. looking at it more as how they talk about it. People look like, oh, well, maybe it's just a drug and it's all just nonsense in my head. And so maybe just because I see it in my head doesn't mean that that is what it should be. But after reading this book, it brought me back to those ideas that I used to have. And then it made me think maybe my ideas weren't so far off if people have been thinking this for thousands of years. And it makes a lot of sense. Like I, they talk about how uh, the mystery of Ulysses, how... I forgot if it was Sophocles or Plato said like, literally, if we get rid of this, this will this will be the downfall of human civilization. Yeah, he like, said, this is this we is need the, this to keep the, us together. The, the secrets in, of Eleusis, they said he said was the one thing that held humanity together or something like that. Yeah, and if, you, and if you've done, yeah, and if you've done psychedelics, you would like. I feel like people would see that. Like, like I said earlier, like when you do them, there's. 
I mean, I'm pretty sure there's obviously that that one percent out there who does them and wants to do the craziest shit ever. And like you said, with a hammer, go destroy things. Mm -hmm. But I feel like for most people, the the experience is so humbling that it's it's not like that, you know, because for most people, I feel like the experience isn't. It's not like you do when you do like cocaine and it's like you feel like, oh, I could do whatever I want. It's more like shit. Yeah, maybe I can do whatever I want, but maybe I shouldn't do it because maybe that makes me a piece of shit. And it's like very self-reflective. And like I said, it's very humbling. Like yeah. I remember when we did the five grams at Brandon's that one time, I remember I told you guys I was in the bathroom for like 15, 20 minutes talking to myself in the mirror, telling myself about how fucked up of a person I was and how I needed to change my life. I don't remember even that. Though at the- yeah, really? I told you guys later because we were all fucked up. Because right? oh, yeah. I went to the bathroom. Yeah, and I remember I was just talking to myself in the mirror, like, "No, motherfucker, you need to stop doing that." Blah blah blah. And maybe the feeling didn't last uh, forever. You know, obviously mm. nothing lasts forever. But I remember though, it fucking like sucked at the time. Like thinking, "Man, I am a piece of shit." But after though, it was nice though to be able to at least be able to look at myself and like realize that you know and at least like he talks about it even if it doesn't correct you the first time it at least starts to put you on a path where you start to look at what you're doing Mm -hmm. versus you know because a lot of people we've talked about it go through their whole lives doing the same shit and never realizing that there's something more or that they're even fucking up you know they may not even or maybe they realize it but never ever want to take a chance to look at it and i feel like psychedelics really do they stop your life for a second and Mm -hmm. they make you look especially if you if you don't if you're not like busy and you're not like because i remember doing it at raves and shit yeah you're so in your head and everything's going on that nothing but doing it at a house and sitting there like you start to like Mm -hmm. go deep in yourself and like fuck you know and it fucks with you and And, but in a good way you know i feel like you need that otherwise your ego goes unchecked your whole life and if your ego goes unchecked it just gets bigger you know and like that's a way to check yourself like okay maybe maybe i need to step back you know maybe i need to stop and like you see that, like they talk about with the ibogaine and uh, ayahuasca, like I, I feel like that should tell you right there that these people who are addicted to pills, heroin, shit like that, will go through these experiences and never touch them again. Or they can go to mm-hmm. rehab for years of their life and battle with it. Or they can go do this once or twice and never even want to touch it again. And that should tell you about what it does, like mm-hmm. about how help that it, it could be if we stopped talking about it as a drug and started talking about it as what it has been used for in religions for thousands of years because even if we even if we disregard everything in this book and like we say it's all bullshit there's still um a lot of actual uh facts and you know there's uh it's proven that like indian uh american indian or whatever i don't know what the correct native Native american American, (laughs) native american uh religions did use these psychedelics Mm -hmm. so even if they can't prove that we still know religions have used these and it's like why else would they use them you know like this this, it's a perfect it's medicine like you know that's how they looked at it versus our view in the u.s and other most places now oh it's a drug oh it's this but it's like not like if you look at cultures in the past they didn't look at it as a drug and because of that it wasn't used as a drug it was used as as this medicine as this healing sacrament way to yeah, as a sacrament. It was holy. It wasn't something you just went and did just for the fuck of it. It yeah. was like, okay, we're going to prepare. Like they said for Mystery of Ulysses, people would prepare for months, maybe years, before they would even ever go and do that. And I think they and would I only think, do it once at Ulysses, too. They would only yeah, do it once, you know? I think. And I think that's really interesting because like, if you really were to go super deep in and trip and you were planning on doing that, which I feel like, I think we talked about the other day, I feel like I haven't even really done that where I prepared that, hey, I'm going to eat these. And I'm going to sit on my couch by myself, no music, no nothing for the whole five hours and just I've done really try to go into myself and think about my life for the whole trip. I've never done that, though, where I don't plan on doing anything. Normally, I have a playlist mm-hmm. planned out or I want to listen to music or do something or that. go on a walk. But I like it would be crazy. I mean, you've said you've done it. But for me, like I haven't like it would be crazy to sit there take a good amount of mushrooms and just i mean i feel like the closest i've ever done was when you were djing at brandon's because i mm. wasn't doing anything I was that's just basically what it couch. was that's what we did yeah we sat there but like I a didn't... legitimate ritual and just didn't speak but... we didn't do nothing crazy we, exactly you know. yeah but you know even then though for me though when i would go into these psychedelic trips though in the back of my mind i always had this notion 
I don't want a bad trip. I want it to be good. Mm. But it would be interesting to sit there and not think about bad or good. Okay, I don't want it. I don't care if it's bad or good. I want to sit here and go as deep into my own self as mm. I can. I because, that. you know, like that's, I feel like what Graham Hancock was talking about towards the end about how they were saying, yeah, it's hard work. You know, mm. like if you're really going to sit there and actually try to go through yourself on it, like that shit is rough, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, you know, it happens even when you don't plan on doing it and that mm -hmm. shit is rough. So like to, for you to sit there and that be your plan, I'm going to sit here for five hours, do nothing except think about my life. Like that's, that's rough. That's work. Do, you know, that's do, like psycho psych. Uh, what's the word? Uh, psych psychosis. Uh, nah, yeah, yeah, pretty much. But <laughs> no, uh, it's just like mental work, you know, yeah, it's like a okay. mental workout, you know? Like a extreme mental workout, yeah. you know, dude. Because, dude, like, I, yeah. One, one time, no. one time, I remember we we're talking about like real deep hard work. Like, I remember one time I was at um, Chris's brother's house or something like that, and um, everybody was hanging out there, and we were drinking all night. And then I had bought mushrooms from somebody who was there, and we were drinking all night, and the sun was like starting to peak up, and. Everybody had fallen asleep, but I was still drunk, wanted to get drunk. I was like drinking vodka from the bottle, bro. That's how much, yeah. you know, I don't do that shit. So that's, I've been there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so as everyone was asleep by myself after drinking and staying up all night, I ate like two grams of mushrooms. Yeah. And I remember crying in the back of this person's house who I'd never met or I didn't know well. And then like a couple of people coming out to talk to me, ask if I'm okay. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm just like trying to calm down. And then I walk and I walk through the front yard and then I go on the side of the house and I sit in trash. They had like a huge pile of trash. So I went and sat there <laughs> tripping my balls off, crying like heavily for like an hour in trash and literally just thinking, okay, I'm dying. I'm going to die here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to die here thinking about Victoria, just thinking about everything. And like, mm -hmm. and I was just like, okay, just let me die. And then eventually I was like, you know what? Fuck this. <laughs> and I got up and it was hard and emotional and I, but a lot changed for me that day. And yeah, sitting in trash, trash threw, me, <laughs> threw me my ass off cried was one of the best yep. things that ever happened to me. <laughs> and I'll say it to this day. No, dude, yeah. and dude, honestly, dude, I still say this too for, um, cause I told you about the Knott's Berry Farm trip. I think we did a trip story on my Knott's Berry Farm trip a long time ago. Oh yeah. It's where I had a really bad trip and had to be watched through a car. Um, dude, still to this day, when I think about that day, that was honestly probably one of the worst experiences of my life just because like, while I was in it, I just, I still can't even describe how bad it felt, you know, but looking back on it, even later that day, like you said, it's still one of my most, it's an experience I wouldn't go back and take away. Like, yeah. it, even though it was terrible, what was happening and I felt like I wanted to die and like, just go away. Like I am completely grateful for that experience. Yeah. So, you know, because I feel like it definitely added to my life you know and i feel like that's what people people i mean and it sucks though because you know it is true like you've seen people too and i won't say any names but we've seen people who psychedelics really aren't meant for you know some people it. really can't handle it you know it's really not for them mm -hmm. which sucks because it would be nice for it to be for everybody and and and, and i think it could be maybe in the right settings I, but i, th I it, think that the ultimate what you want or the ultimate gain from psychedelics that we want is in true enlightenment. But, and I also mm -hmm. think there's ways of to get to true enlightenment that you don't Without need psychedelics. It. Yeah. Yeah. I Definitely. think they talk about that, how people would fast mm -hmm. and do things like fast, that. Like there's you know, other ways to get into, yeah, you shit. could get into these trance states in other ways. It's just, mm -hmm. this is a much quicker way. Exactly. Right? This way you just, you just eat some or drink some, you're yeah. there. You don't yeah. need to spend days on it. See fast. that idea right there. This is the quick, easy way is is a really uh easy to call out yeah and to dismiss it skeptics. yeah yeah to dismiss it yeah you could dismiss it. it well well that's too easy mm -hmm. yeah it's too yeah but i mean i feel like it's hard to do that too like if you like i mean if we're just talking about mushrooms in general dude like i've always thought it's a trip that mushrooms can survive in space like you know like yeah. the spore the spores can survive i was like dude if the spores can survive in space like then they're probably on other planets too. Yeah. And if they are on other planets, I, I don't know. It's just, I feel like it's harder. Dude, 
I I dismissed it for a while too. Like I was saying in the beginning after a long time, but then reading this book and really thinking about it. And I haven't really had a psychedelic trip in, in a, in a good amount of time. Like I have had small ones. Like I ate some mushrooms not that long ago, but like not a lot, you know, not mm. enough where I was just completely gone inside myself. You know, yeah. it was more enough where I knew I was there and I was scared, but I wasn't like fully full, you know, cause when yeah. you're fully into it, it's it's a way different thing. So I haven't done it in a while, but after reading this book, just like I don't know, man, it made me realize, like, man, I, I it made me remember how I felt about them, and I was like, man, they are they can be very beautiful mm-hmm. things. Yeah, they terrifying little See, pieces of shit, but it could be beautiful, you know. How you talked about how like we learned so much and we were so inspired and motivated when we first started doing them, and it slowly wore it off. I don't necessarily know if it slowly wore off as much so as society kind of hammered into our head like maybe we were yeah that it is this bullshit bullshit and and, and i wouldn't say i ever felt like it was wrong but yeah i think that idea started to get hammered in like we were talking about a second ago like oh this is this is too simplistic for this to be like i i think it's so complex only because i'm fucked up not it's just brain chemistry yeah not because it's actually complex but then like reading this book i'm like no like especially written by a guy who hasn't done them and the way he talks about them and uses mm-hmm. other people's testimonies about them. It's like, yeah, this is this is how it felt. And then it's cool. Like, I mean, obviously, it's not 100 percent proven about the mystery of Ulysses. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm pretty sure it will be soon enough proven and maybe yeah. the next 10 years. But it's like it's interesting to think like, oh, man, these same guys who are considered the fathers of a lot of the things we still study today had the same exact feelings that you and I had, mm-hmm. you know? Like, like they did, like I, some of the, you know, when I read the John Hopkins, uh, little interviews with the people who are doing the psilocybin studies now to the, the mystery Ulysses, when they talk about it and I forget where else they talk about it, but like these different accounts, I was like, it is interesting that even for me, these are accounts that I can relate to. And these guys lived thousands of years ago. So it's like, it's crazy, you know, like it's it, what, it just what makes, other experiences? Maybe it's not bullshit. What other things that are written back then, experience wise, could we truly have in common? There's nothing else yeah. that they do that we could have. You know what I mean? What else could we have in common? <laughs> and to have this yeah. this in, in life changing, monumental, huge experience in common with people from fucking thousands of years ago is so weird. That's so weird. It is. It's crazy, you know, and yeah. it just makes me think like, yeah, maybe. Maybe it wasn't all bullshit then, you know, mm-hmm. like there's something here, you know, we're all wired for it, too. And it's, I think Brian talks about that. We're all wired for it. Mm-hmm. So there has to be a reason. Yep. Otherwise, they wouldn't even interact with your body in the first exactly. place, you know? Yep. Yeah. So one of one of the things that I, 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 did, I definitely want to talk about is the idea that this place that we go to on in deep psychedelic uh, states of mind of consciousness is some form of an afterlife. And basically yeah. the, the book is called the immortality key. And, and, and it's wild to think that a lot of these experiences, they weren't trying to self reflect too much. They weren't trying to be better people. They were trying to get in contact with what happens when you die. They were obsessed mm-hmm. with it. They were, they would not, this is one thing that people don't understand about ancient Greece and a lot of history, like, you know, ancient human beings is that they were terrified of dying or, or not, maybe not terrified, but they were obsessed with it of death. Yeah, uh, and, yeah. and I think that we've lost that obsession with death nowadays because we have so much shit that our ego uses to distract us. We have so yeah. many distractions that nobody's afraid of death. Like I talked to Monica about it and she's, she, you know, and I'm not, I don't want to you know call her out or nothing like that, but she kind of is in a state of mind where she just doesn't, you know, give a fuck. She's like, we're here. You know, I don't really care about history. You know, I don't care when we go and we die, you know, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. that's truly how a lot of people feel. And it's nothing wrong with it. Um, but it's just shows that I don't, I don't know. Maybe there's something there that, you know, we just have a lot of things that, that, that distract us from this idea of death. And I'm curious as to what you think if, as far as if these places that people go in deep DMT experiences and things like that is some sort of an afterlife and what you think of that? No, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'd use the word afterlife, but I would definitely uh, Mm -hmm. use like, it's definitely like maybe like a different plane of existence, like a different. Do you think we go there? I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to say dimension either, but I, I don't know about that. So, okay. So for me, like what you were saying, um, 
Or is I that too totally, basic of a way of putting it? Maybe that's we go there when we die. I don't know. I don't know. No, no, I get what you're saying <laughs> yeah. though. Like, yeah, yeah, like you're there once. That's why people have communicated with spirits and ancestors mm-hmm. and shit like that. But um, I don't know. It's like what you were saying too a second ago about the the they were obsessed with death and shit. And I think also our culture, like you said, there's a lot of distractions now. But it's also like we live to a much older age now, so death unless you're born sick or something isn't really something you and I really have to True. or like you live in a shitty place where people die all the time like mm. it's 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 not something that you and I are really confronted with every day versus back then you lived till like maybe you were 30. Mm-hmm. So by the time you're 15, you're already half of your lifespan, you know? That's true. And, I and never thought about that. Wow. Yeah. So it was like something you had to confront because no matter what, like you were going to die young. So it was something you had to get into. And, and the thing too, like you said about wow. how people don't seem as scared about it now. I feel like I feel the opposite. I feel like mm. now, at least in the U.S., like we don't even really want to confront the idea of death. So that tells me that we are scared of it. You know, people may mm. say they don't care, but then once you're on that deathbed, if you're not ready for it, you're going to struggle and fight for your life. Versus, I think John uh, uh, Graham Hancock talked about his homie. Uh, I, was it John Anthony West mm-hmm. who he said when oh, yeah. he died that he's like he was ready for his death when yeah. he died. He went. He's like no qualms, nothing, and he's like. And I feel like that's what these people were trying to do. They were just preparing themselves, like, you know, and now we're so anti-death. And so let's not talk about it. Let's let's mourn versus celebrate. It's it's like, I don't know, dude. Like, I feel like it, we've grown a little scared of it. Even I think, if we I think say may- we're not. I think maybe we're not. We're more fearful, but less obsessed. And it's kind of it's maybe. Yeah, way exactly. Yeah. yeah that, that, or we yeah, care that's less perfect. or whatever the fuck. We're definitely more. We're definitely less obsessed with it, which yeah. I think, like I said, could have to do with the fact that it's not something unless something tragic happens. You and I are really going to have to confront for e- at least probably another 20, 30 years before we really have to think, oh, I could just die, just drop dead any day. You know, I think it with I mean, technology with our, and, and me, me, uh, the innovations of medicine, I don't know if we're going to. We might be like 150 years old, bro. For real. Like for real, for real. Like for real. We might live really old. (laughs) Like especially rich people who have been taking care of themselves for a long time. Yeah. People are going to start living for a long fucking time in the next few uh, dozen years, dude. I'm telling you, it's going to be weird. Yeah, it it will be weird. Did you know that by the year 2050, it'll not only be legally, but socially acceptable to marry a robot? (laughs) (laughs) Hold on with that. Let's take a quick break. Hey, what's up, everybody? How's it going? Uh, I go by the name of Mikey. Some call me Audible484. Um, I just wanted to quickly say, before we get back to the show, if uh, you guys could follow me on Instagram and Twitter, it would be amazing. I would truly appreciate it. Um, On Instagram, it's Audible underscore 484 because somebody stole Audible 484 from me and they won't give it to me. So if you guys know that person, please let them know to hit me up reply to my many emails over the years uh and on twitter it is just audible 484 so instagram audible underscore 484 and on twitter audible 484 please follow me come check me out i'm more i'm active on both of those pretty pretty much so yeah let's get back to the show so well actually we were talking about if um this place that people go when they're in deep psychedelic experiences is some sort of like an afterlife or something that is connected with death and um Honestly, I'll say that on, since, since I was young, when, when I just thought about what happens when you die, the, everything going black and you just going to sleep always sounded like the most logical explanation that we're just animals. We just die. Yeah. Any idea of a soul and spirit is just something made up by our brains and we're just gone. Um. The only thing that's ever changed my perspective on that is psychedelics and the love I have for my kids. Like those are the only two things that make me like, oh, maybe it's just the love for my kids is more so like maybe that's just like I love them so much. I'm afraid to think that way because I'm afraid that I'll ever have to live a life without them or, or just or just, you know, whatever. And the psychedelic thing is just that. Yeah, man, I've experienced supernatural shit like motherfuckers watch movies and they see they see tv shows with supernatural shit i have experienced it i've seen the super i've literally ped trees on their head and smiled and put my hand through rivers and you know i fucking 
you know, Put been my there. Hand through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I, I've seen real actual magic and that is one of the things that affected it. Um, I don't know if I've ever gone deep enough except on Salvia. When I did Salvia that first time and then I went out and smoked it, I smoked it like, I don't know if I ever told you, we know the video we did on, on Salvia. Uh, when, uh, oh, with you and Daniel? Yeah. So yeah, my yeah, mom yeah. walked in and then yelled at us and I kicked me that. out. And then yeah. I ended up getting the rest of the Salvia, which is like fucking over half a gram still and smoking it all bowl after bowl after bowl in the front yard in yeah, the dark by myself. I remember. Yeah, I remember you telling you? me. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. that's that right there was one of the deepest I've ever gotten because I remember entities to the left of me speaking to me and I was talking to them out loud and I don't remember what we were saying, but I remember speaking to be things and them trying to tell me stuff. And I was so afraid. I didn't even want to look like that was one of the deepest I've gone. So of course, the psilocybin, the, the, you know, the shrooms that we ate that night with Brandon and stuff like that. But part of me feels like I just haven't gotten gone deep enough to truly understand, uh, the, yeah, the, you know, but I don't know. No, no, I feel you, dude. Uh, the the deepest I've ever been was that night at Brandon's with those five grams, bro. Mm -hmm. I remember I I I told you guys too that I felt like when I would close my eyes in the beginning, especially, like I don't remember the conversation either, but I felt like when I had my eyes closed that there was some sort of entity that was in the sky, even though my eyes were closed and we were inside, that was in the sky just talking to me and like trying to give me pieces of information that would be very important to my life you know mm -hmm. i don't remember anything that they said but i remember though the distinct feeling and it's like you know for people who haven't done psychedelics they might think like i'm saying mm -hmm. like oh i just saw like a big alien there and this isn't what it was because i couldn't even describe to you what it looked like or what it sounded like but when my eyes were closed despite not knowing what it looked or really sounded like or being able to describe it I know it was fucking there. Like, yeah. I know it wasn't like something I was just making up for the sake of it. Like I felt like there was something trying to communicate with me, trying to tell me, I mean, maybe it was just my subconscious, but I've never <laughs> had it take a form like that. Like it felt like it was like some higher, some higher yeah. thing. I don't, I don't want to say like God or something, but like some higher being that knew a lot more than I did and yeah. was trying to tell me, Hey bro, like these are the things you need to know for your life, you know? <laughs> I mean, you're just so fucked up. You can't really take it all in either, you yeah. know, but it, it was there, you know, and like, you know, you and me both. I've done a lot of other drugs. Other drugs don't they don't mm. do things like that. You know, no. like you may no. have fun. You may feel good after you may they may cure your depression, but there's not many things that, that to throw you into that. And then on top of that, like, you know, you don't feel like shit after like you feel good after even if it's bad, like you said, even after a bad trip you feel good after because you mm -hmm. just start to realize, Hey, like it makes you appreciate the life that you're living. You know, it makes you realize how fucking caught up on bullshit you are most of your life. And then you do something like that and you get so deep and intense and introspective that you realize, why did I care about any of the shit to begin with? And not even maybe that, why did I care? Why did I so deeply care though, that I would have let it affect me as a person mm -hmm. and not just realize, Hey, you know, like, it's just life, you know, and yep. life keeps fucking going and keep moving. And the only thing to do is move with it. And like for me, like now after reading the book and looking back on those experiences, now, like I like I said earlier, for a while, it started getting hammered into me. Maybe it is bullshit. But now looking back, I'm like, nah, like anything that teaches you something like that yes. can't be bullshit. Absolutely. Like, because that's an important lesson for you, no matter who you are, no matter if you've done drugs or not, that's an important lesson to learn that life's just going to keep moving and you get hung up on things or you could just keep fucking moving with it so, and realize that, you know, it's a, it's a constant ups and downs. It's never going to be all up. It's never going to be all down, maybe long periods of both, but it's never going to be one or the other forever. It's, it's a balance, just like everything, just like the yin and the yang. Yeah. You see so many symbols throughout our whole history that now make me think, I wonder if they've arisen out of psychedelics. There's, <laughs> This yin and this yang. There's always going to be both sides, and they're always going to. They need to be. There, there needs to be. They need mm -hmm. to coexist together because you can't have one without the other. You wouldn't know what a good feeling felt like if you didn't know what feeling down and feeling bad felt like. You know, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can it's, never be happy if you didn't know what sad was. You know, for sure. Yeah, and that's what I think. The idea like, of this everlasting heaven or hell is ridiculous because if yeah. you feel one feeling forever, you will cease to feel that feeling. 
yeah, it's how it's it works. Like you get used to it. Yeah. yeah, it's like anything. You you do it so often, you get used to it. You build yep. a little bit of tolerance, and you don't even realize it's happening anymore. Exactly. So yeah. So but, it, um, it's it's so like w- one thing that another thing that kind of trips me out. Somebody I heard somebody say recently is like like this idea of a soul and a spirit, and you know, it's we don't know. But one of the things that you can think about is that like what does your heart run on? Because the heart is the what pumps your blood but it's not plugged into anything. What is the energy that keeps your heart beating? Like why? What's the power source? It just is a, an organ yeah. that continues to beat from nothing. It has power that it's continuously getting from where? Yeah. You know, uh, like it's well, weird I mean, to I me. Mean, yeah. But I mean, I guess like, you know, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't even want to get into it because I don't know a shitload of anatomy, you know, but there are I like, guess there's like a scientific, there's probably like a basic. Fucking, yeah. You know, like the <laughs> blood and everything. And then the things we eat that give us energy and mm, shit like that. Oh, okay. You know? Okay. So it's like a self-sustaining you know? system. Yeah, it is. But yeah, what what makes the heart beat the first time? The oh, it's in the life from the mother. Okay. Maybe that just broke down that fucking theory. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I think, I think the theory is too, that like over time, you know, the, things became more complex organisms you know mm. we started out a single cell not doing much no no i get where you're coming from though bro that's a valid question <laughs> <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> not not that that's a uh it's a valid question though you know because i can see what you're saying like yeah, you know you like, what I'm <laughs> yeah like i mean i understand know, it like like in a physical sense like a, like but, a physical biological sense why it would it biologically keeps beating but, but there's something extra there, maybe I don't know that kind of just shit on it. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a whole nother conversation, though. You know, if there's like, I feel like that's well, getting into it. Yeah. Is there any meaning to life and living? Well, well think all, about it like this: know? there's definitely energy that's released when you die. There's energy that's you oh, know, yeah. there's what and is, then it? If is you, it Newton's if, law or some shit like one of those laws talk about that, like when something's yeah. taken or it must be, I don't know, someone some shit like that. But like to me, I feel like if anything. I, what makes sense to me is that a body, a human being, their body has uh, energy to it. And when you're gone, when you die, that energy needs to go somewhere. That stardust, that fucking, those atoms and all that those, that energy there goes places. And I think that's kind of explains a lot of why people feel like people's spirits around after they die and, you know, things like that. I think it's literally just could just be actually just energy in space energy that is just released after a person dies. You know what I'm saying? I can see that. And then it just, it, it, it exists in this higher realm where Mm -hmm. we don't, we don't see things like that. You know, Mm -hmm. we don't see, we don't see energy and shit like that. And that's why you you feel like people who are dead, like people who've passed away, you feel their presence. And you know, there's people who say they see ghosts and hear things and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, no, I, I get you. And that goes back into like what you were saying about how, um, when you do enter these psychedelic realms, like you're entering into this place where this energy actually does exist. So you just Mm -hmm. don't see it on a normal basis, you know, Mm -hmm. which could make sense. And honestly, dude, it's believable. Cause if you look at physics, like everything makes sense until you get to microphysics where it's so small that the human eye can't see. And then all Mm -hmm. the rules change. Mm -hmm. So why couldn't it be like that on a different level for us? Like we see things on our base level, but once you get to this higher level, all our rules that we use on this level Mm -hmm. don't work on that level. So it's like, if you went lower than us, our rules don't work. Each realm is its own separate thing, you know? And it's, um, it's interesting to think about, uh, I don't know exactly where I stand on if I believe like it's like the spirits exist and that we're going somewhere. But I definitely believe that there's a reason why the shit acts like a key and unlocks parts of your brain that you can't normally unlock alone. Just like I couldn't just turn it on right now if I wanted to. And even knowing like that's the thing that trips me out too. even knowing what it does to you and the feelings you get, you can't just like us talking about it. It's like what we said in the beginning. Us talking about this is one thing, but experiencing it is a whole different fucking thing. Yeah. The experience of a mushroom, even if you could perfectly describe what happened during your mushroom trip, the 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 words and everything don't justify the feeling and the experience, mm-hmm. which is it's just on a whole nother level. It's just so intense, you know? And it's like it's like what Joe Rogan said with the DMT, which unfortunately I haven't really had a chance to do mm-hmm. like on at least where I broken through. So, uh, but like he says, like, you know, he's like, once you've done it, you realize, fuck, like 
I can take three hits of this and go there. And it's like, like it's a total dream fucking world. Like I remember on those mushrooms, like when I'd close my eyes, it was literally instant dream. Literally I'd close my eyes. I'd see waterfalls. I'd see beautiful landscapes, Mm -hmm. but like instantly it wasn't that I was thinking about it. It was just my eyes closed. It was fucking there. I was there. And it's like, I don't know, man, there has to be some sort of reasoning. I don't know. And then uh, it's just, I feel like we're kind of getting off track from the actual book. Anyway. <laughs> feel, yeah. uh, but uh, I, I thought this was interesting uh, about it is um, the dude Triptolemus is oh, yeah, the, yeah. The, the missionary from the mysteries and mm-hmm. how he ends up popping up all over the world, you yep. know? Mm-hmm. And then uh, it's just, it just, I don't know, man, it just shows. I feel like this book just really does a good job of obviously it doesn't fully prove it, mm-hmm. but it gives you enough information that I feel like m- for most people, for the common thinker who isn't obsessed with religion would easily be able to see this. Even if you didn't believe in it before, like unless you had a, a bias and a reason not to believe it because you were super Christian or super yeah. Catholic or super against drugs, like unless you have one of those biases, I don't see how, the normal common person wouldn't pick this up, read it, and based on all the information and scientific uh, data, not come to maybe the exact conclusion, but a conclusion around there. Well, yeah, then religion probably did arise from maybe not even psychedelics, but from psychedelic experiences, you yeah. know, from maybe people laying in a cave, not eating for days yeah. and and having these experiences. Either way, though, I, I firmly do believe now that, yeah, religion had to have ar- arose from from some sort of psychedelic experience like it just makes sense you know so, they, i mean unless god is real and hell is real in heaven and we're both wrong and we're all going there you know but uh unless that i feel like this is true it's, it's right it's so interesting that you brought up um other people re- are people reading this book and like coming to terms with certain things or like a, like a non a christian you know reading this and maybe not you know whatever um the forward by graham hancock i loved it I really yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Although, yeah. although I'll say that I feel like if you are a hardcore Christian or you're trying to look at this book as a scientific piece of work, I think Graham's really straightforward approach at talking down about Christianity and his experiences kind of throw off the scientific approach that Brian Murray rescue took. And as beautiful as the forward was, I think it was kind of aggressive and a little, a little biased kind of honestly. And I'm not going to, I'm not even going to hold back on that. If I would have read the forward as a Christian, because he talks a lot about how it's, he was his, his growing up. And, and I don't necessarily think this book is trying to denounce Christianity and talk bad about it. You know, yeah. I, but I think that Graham's, it was just a, his, his forward was beautiful and amazing. I loved it, but my just, you know, present a certain point of view that I don't think Brian was trying to do in the book. Would you say, do you get what I'm saying or not? I can see what you're saying. Yeah. Cause it, it almost, <clears throat> Brian kind of avoids, I feel like more so he avoids poking at the religion and like talking shit about it versus Graham Hancock kind of in the beginning <laughs> does kind of talk shit, which which I get where he's coming from, but so, yeah. I, so I see what you're saying. It's like, because of that, I can see how somebody would be turned off. Like, oh, you're just mm-hmm. basically talking shit about my religion. Whereas Brian's not trying to do that. I feel mm-hmm. like, like you said, he's not even trying to denounce Christianity. He's trying to say that our version of Christianity today is mm-hmm. lacking something he's, that he's Christian. That create, he, it's lacking the essential ingredient that mm-hmm. made Christianity come to be what it is in the first place mm-hmm. that we're lacking that that we're lacking that that aspect of it that that made people believe back in the day. Yep. Now we're just expecting you hear a story and you got to believe. But back then there used to be a part of Christianity and religion in general that made you believe. Like there were there was something that there was an experience there that made you actually believe. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that oh you need to believe otherwise you're going to go to hell. It was here come try this and here see come if eat you don't the believe. body and blood of God yeah. and become and him. Tell, and, yeah, and tell me that you don't believe in this after you've done it, you know? And it's like, that's a much more convincing argument. I think he talks about that in the beginning of the book, too, about, like, you know, I think we talked about it, I've said it, like, ten times during this podcast, but, mm-hmm. like, you know, you reading the, the scripture and experiencing yeah. it are two different things, you know? And back then, and that's what it was. It wasn't, let's get together and read. It's like, let's get together and have this experience. Exactly. And, and it's still a thing. See. 
and it's still a thing, even in Christianity, that you have a communion or you 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 eat or drink the blood and body of Christ. Yeah, um, yeah. And but it's all it's just a symb- symbolic thing that, and I'd always be like, what are, what is this? Is weird. This doesn't make sense. So, but if when we were all doing that in church, everybody in church was taking a psychedelic then I could see how that would actually be a religious experience. How on Sundays, when we go every a hundred people take a little bit of acid and fucking sing and cry and shit like this. Like that I could see how that would be a really a legitimate religious experience. But it, from a child's perspective, the symbolism is just stupid. And yeah, you know, but yeah, man, it's fucking wild. You know, one thing I did want to say, I wanted to bring up is that, when we took acid the first time at Huntington Beach, I don't know if I remember t- telling you this, but I remember specific thoughts that I, and what felt like memories uh, while we were in the water and while I was peeking of Ulysses. And I remember thinking about Greek mythology like a lot at that time and i was never into that shit. i barely knew anything about it but for whatever reason yeah. when i wanted to walk into the water on lsd i felt this weird connection to just greek mythology and history and shit like that so yeah uh that's weird <laughs> i don't know that just it just made me think about that recently dude uh, i mean that's actually a good way to get into something i want to talk about is one of the more interesting parts of the books for me was when I, I've honestly, for a long time now, uh, I've actually said it in other songs too, but I've, for actually for the last couple of years, I've really wanted to make an album or an EP or something based off of like Dionysus. Cause I think it's, he's very interesting. I actually didn't know that he was such a big character. I knew who mm. he was and I knew the story, but I didn't know that there was, um, until I read this book, that there was similarities between him and Jesus. I, have, I honestly thought he was just some secondary God, but then, you know, reading this and how they talk about how Dionysus was the first story of someone turning water into wine and that the way Dionysus looks is almost similar to Jesus. And then there's also the, the statue that's in the book. It was in my phone book too where he he's being sacrificed Dionysus. And I think Brian even says, if you show this to somebody now, a lot of people would probably tell you that if you asked them who it was, they'd probably say it's Jesus because it looks so similar. Mm. And then he was also wanted to be sacrificed. <laughs> so then his body could be turned into a wine carrier for all his followers to drink out of. And it's, it's just so similar to the Jesus myth. It, it, um, it, it that it's, it's interesting yeah. that it was, because that's what they talk about, that, it, that maybe... Uh, that uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, that Christianity, that the things they couldn't completely get rid of, they mm-hmm. just adopted, which makes sense because how could you get rid of wine? Wine was such a big thing that it would make sense to adopt that into your religion. And it's just, I, I've i always thought Dionysus was just an interesting character. And I actually, the book they talk about, um, the Bacche, they talk about it in there mm-hmm. a couple times. Yeah. I actually, uh, when they brought it up, I, I, I think I told you, I texted you. I actually realized I had that book. I had bought it, and I had just never read it because it's a small-ass little play. So I, in between this book, I read it because I was like, oh, I should read it oh, since wow. they're about to talk about it. And, uh, dude, that that shit, I mean, that shit is crazy because there is. If you read it, there's a lot of there's a lot of mention of herbs and just the wine. and Because the book basically is about Dionysus and – he is in um he all his followers are women and mm. they pretty much they, they get fucked up and go into these trances and have orgies and shit it's pretty mm. dope and yeah. uh but anyways this dude uh pentheus is gonna be king soon and um his dad and his mom though are kind of followers of dionysus like the dad follows but he obviously doesn't take place and then the mom though is actually part of the cult and Pantheus, because he's going to become king, is like, nah, like we're going to outlaw this shit. Like oh. we're going to get we're going to get rid of Dionysus. Like he's just turning our women into uh, uh, to depravity and to you know these like fucking crazy creatures. So then Pantheus does this whole thing. His mom goes off with uh, Dionysus followers, and then Pantheus. Are you still doing it? Mm-hmm. Um, they're on their way. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. And then uh, Pantheus, though, 
wants to outlaw Dionysus. So he actually ends up uh, arresting Dionysus, who then the the gods end up burning the temple down that he's arrested in. So Dionysus gets free, and he's a shapeshifter too. So he takes the identity of uh, I forget what he looks like, like some old dude or something, and then. Um, Pentheus uh, runs into him and is basically telling him he's trying to go find the cult, the Manids, or however you say, Manids, Manids, the the girls, they're the women followers of Dionysus. Mm. He's trying to find him and get his mom back. So Dionysus, he's pissed because like this fool has been like talking shit about him and like he's a god and he's not getting any respect. So he does this whole thing, sets Pentheus up. So then Pentheus does, he shows them where the girls are, but the girls are in the middle of their trance ritual. And they, they, they typically would like kill goats or pigs during it too. So the, they, the women see him though, uh, cause Dionysus puts him on top of this tree so he could spy on them, but he puts him on top of the tree. So the girls will see him specifically. It's like mm. a trap. And then the women see him, they throw these rocks. He falls off the tree. The mom is the first one. She, cause she's in a trance. She walks over to him and she rips his arm off. And then all the girls start ripping him to pieces and they dance in his blood. And then after like the mom thinks it's like a lion and she takes the head back to town and then shows her dad or shows her husband and like, look like, you know, I killed the lion. And then the husband's like, that's your son, blah, blah, blah. And then she comes out of her trance and realizes it. It's all this big punishment wow. for black, for, for fucking, fucking with Dionysus he punished them you know but uh and I don't know what really what this has to do with the book but it's interesting though because when you read it like dude like the the trances they're going into and like what they're drinking it's like obviously not regular wine you know mm -hmm. it's not like a drunk so thing it's this, like a, this story you just told was that what 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 was that or that that was the the book you have the box yeah, it's called the Bacchae. That's it's a play. It's uh, by uh, Euripides, but uh, it, they talk about it in the thing. Um, he actually uses yeah. a lot of lines from it in the book because there's a lot of evidence in there of the herbs that they would spike the um, actual wine with. Because mm -hmm. I think that's what he uses it for. But it's just it's. Well, I I thought I'd tell the story though because it's an interesting and, story. And, way. and what was that written like? What was the purpose of that? Was that just like a entertainment story that was written yeah, by him, so, or was it to like try to, to well, turn away from played. Dionysus? They were all no, no. that one him? actually. It, yeah, if you read it, I mean, obviously, what happens is a terrible tragedy. Yeah, it but sounds like point, sounds like bad for Dionysus. That's what I mean. But the point of the book is that you need to show these gods reverence because they're oh. they'll, they'll they'll get you back if you're not, you know, because that's it. what it was. Like Dionysus was punishing them because they were trying to take away his power, and he's like, "No, I'm a god." Like you Got know, and the gods are going to have vengeance. But um. It's just an interesting story, but Dionysus also, if in I think I I don't know if I told you this, but in True Blood season two, Marianne's character, remember Marianne? Now I remember. Yeah, she works at a bar. Right? She's the one who has the she has the goat the the bull's head. Remember, she shakes and they have orgies. It, does she own a bar or some shit? No, no, she she has eggs. Remember eggs? The dude he hung around with her, and she had a cult, and they would have orgies and shit. I'm gonna and, look it uh, up. I'm gonna look it up real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, Marianne, and she's supposed to be Dionysus in a way in True Blood. Oh, really? That, that, I think it's season two. It's either season two or three. I'm pretty sure it's two. I mean, it's been a while since I've seen it, so I could be wrong. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I see. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember but, her now. Yeah. But yeah, so um, I don't know, dude. Dionysus, I always thought was a. Look, look, hold on. Marianne Forrester was a powerful woman who worshipped the god Dionysus. She creates massive havoc when she arrives in Bond Temps or Bond, whatever they called it. She's killed by Sam, who transforms into a white bull and trick and tricks Marianne into thinking he's Dionysus. He stabs her with his horn before reverting back to his human form. I barely remember that. Wow, that's wild. Dude, I forgot about that. When he does, <laughs> he does kill her by tricking her. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, because Dionysus would take the form of a bull sometimes. But that's um, wild. True blood is awesome shit. Dude, Dionysus though is just I just thought it I just always thought it was just like an interesting mm. he's an interesting character and story. I like how he's this because he's very revered God, which mm. I did not know. That's why I was saying, like I didn't know there were similarities between him and Jesus, because from my understanding of him, I always thought, oh, he was this party god, blah, 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 which I think is a common misconception. Cause now that I've read this book, it's like, oh no, like they really, really worship Dionysus, especially, and it makes sense because he was the god of wine and revelry and wine was the drink back then. And it's like, damn, I didn't realize how much emphasis they actually did put on this one god. I always thought it was just some story. And but then to see how they transformed Dionysus sort of into Jesus, or at least gave Jesus Dionysus qualities. And did who did that? Really 
what? Who gave Jesus the Dionysic? You know uh, what I'm saying? I, like, um, like who? They, would they talk about? Uh, so it was. Hold on. So, so what? Yeah, it was John, right? I didn't think that, but but Jesus had no. Did was Jesus aware of his similarities to Dionysus, or was he even no, a real I person? That's the thing I get confused by. But it's like. How? Oh, I don't think Dionysus was a real person. I could be wrong. No, no. I, I, I mean, yeah. Person. Yeah. Yeah. But Jesus, though, at least from my understanding, was a real person, right? There's like evidence that Jesus I believe, yes, was yeah. a man that actually existed. Yeah. You know, he, you know, I mean, there's no saying what he actually did or didn't do, but that he actually existed. Mm-hmm. And um, that's what I'm saying. I wonder but, if I mean, he I, knew, but, like, he didn't have the idea of the similarities with Dionysus. I don't believe. Probably not, you know. And, and but then how too, how did I, it connect? Like who made those connections? And that's what's kind of still gray for me. Like I don't understand well, because, where these okay, connections so came from. You would probably know better than me, but uh, from my understanding though, the 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 books like the book of John, the book of Paul, all that shit, these were written maybe like a couple hundred years after Jesus yes. actually existed. You know? uh-huh. Yeah. So I think that's kind of where it came from, you know, because mm. like Jesus didn't, for the people who wrote those books, they didn't really actually meet Jesus because it was a hundred years ago. Some of them, you know, mm. uh, didn't really have experiences with Jesus. So it would make sense. Like, I mean, you don't know what he looks like and you start pulling from other religions to make him look like this or that. Um, I, I don't know though. You know, I mean, I don't know how this shit happens. Like I'm not confusing. That's here. what's confusing yeah. me still. It's like that, that whole timeline, how it was set up and like yeah. how it became what it was. Because like, if there's these similarities between Dionysus and Jesus, even down to the way they look, it almost makes me think that Jesus was not real either because there, how could there be similarities between a real person and a, and a God and a fake birth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that doesn't, it's not like he was born unless he knew he's like, you know what? I'm going to be similar to Dionysus and I'm going to do this, but I'm going to, and and it's kind of confusing. I think this is the, probably the stupidest that I've sounded so far on the podcast, but like, I, I, I feel like it's just that part's confusing. And like, yeah, I don't know. No, it, it is. <laughs> dude. I, I, it obviously is like, I can't really put it into words. Like my idea would be of it would be that, like I said, Dionysus and Jesus were were different times, and then Jesus and the books that were written about him were different times, and that there was an actual person, Jesus, who actually was trying to spread whatever religion or whatever form of Christianity he was trying to spread, mm-hmm. but because these people didn't see him or know him, they only had their little stories by word of mouth, too, so, mm-hmm. you know, like when you play the game of telephone, eventually it changes up, you know? So yeah. and I don't know. You, I, you it, Dionysus was in, in running, like it is a very um, recorded, it's, it's actually recorded that there were cults that, uh, that worship Dionysus, that there's books about Dionysus. He's, he's mm-hmm. mentioned in several books from back in that time. So it makes sense that he was already an entity. So when Jesus came into the picture and they were trying to describe him it they would, give him some of these qualities but i don't know you know because then like you said if that's the case then was jesus real then you know like, was he a real person? <laughs> that's like that's so i don't know either you so know? <laughs> i i think one of the things that kind of like made it seem a little like i just what made it put it in perspective a little bit is that i remember brian saying and i'm not calling him brian like i know him but yeah. i remember my boy brian saying <laughs> yeah. in the podcast with my boy joe uh that something about how these ideas of there being these borders between Dionysus and Jesus and other cults and other things that they were doing, there weren't these diff definitions. It was all blurred. It was all yeah. similar. There weren't these different, you know, there weren't these definitions that were giving them now. It was all kind of blurred and very similar, you know? So it's, it's, it seems to be very complicated, but so still so interesting. Oh dude. So interesting. Uh, it's fucking crazy. I can't wait to um, more. Yeah, dude. Uh, the Dionysus, though, was definitely one of the most interesting parts. And then it also was interesting to me, like I said, about the, the women the priestesses. And then also, the I don't know if you've had a chance to read these or if they're available to read. I didn't actually. I meant to look it up, but I, I just haven't. Like um, the Book of Mary. Like, I didn't know there was a Book of Mary. You know, they oh, talk Magdalene? about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah I do Magdalene. remember that. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know if you've ever, before this, had you heard of these, the Gnostic books and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I I was wondering, like, 
if that's even available to read anywhere. Because I thought that was super interesting, too, how they talk about that. Uh, was it John or one of them added in later in a later edition that Jesus also appeared to Peter to tell him to spread the word. But originally, he had just only appeared to Mary and told Mary, hey, you need to spread my word. And then I, I thought it was interesting, too. They talk about with Persephone and Demeter and about how it was the mother, the daughter, Mm -hmm. And almost like this spirit. And then that got morphed into Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And it was just crazy to see how things were adopted and taken. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's hard to deny. Maybe, 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 even if I were to say, I believe everything that was written in the Bible and Christianity and blah, blah, blah. Even it's still, it would be hard to deny, though, the similarities that have arisen between the two just like it's hard to deny the similarities that arise between egyptian religion and christianity too yeah. it's like yeah maybe that did happen but even if it did happen why is it so similar like mm -hmm. it, it's and and over such a long span of time be so similar it's hard for things to stay that similar over long periods of time dude like even yeah. Like I said a second ago, like playing the game telephone with like fucking four people in a house, mm -hmm. the message is drastically different by it gets there. So thousands of years, it's like, that's why too, sometimes it's hard for me to wrap my head around how anybody knows anything about back then yeah. because it's all been warped. It's been written by winners. It's been written by whoever had the ability to be able to write mm -hmm. or to, to read at that time, because I'm pretty sure a lot of people probably did not know how to read or write mm -hmm. at that time, you know? So it's just, uh, it's crazy. There's so much like mystery behind it still, which is really interesting. Yeah. But it's cool, dude. I like how at the end they, they said it what in May this year that in um around where Jesus was that they found in those uh incense containers that they tested positive mm -hmm. for DHT and C B D. And I was like, damn, I was like, there, there it is, you know, mm -hmm. like that's the first like foolproof evidence that yep. okay, they were using something psychoactive, yep. you know, even yep. if it was just marijuana. Mm -hmm. But think about it, dude. I remember when we the first time we got high on weed, if you don't smoke weed and you every like year or two smoke mm -hmm. it once, that shit gets you fucked oh, up. Absolutely. Like it does take you to a, a psychedelic for mind sure. state for sure. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So it's like if these people were only smoking once in their life and getting super high, like I could totally see how that could also be part of it, you mm -hmm. know? It's so but wild, I don't know, man. man so wild but, uh, this is so much fun to fucking i it, i'm i'm really excited for them to make this into a show because i think it'll be much more digestible for mo the common person because you and i i mean we're not yeah. super smart or anything but it, oh. and it it took us we were you know we it took us it was hard to read <laughs> it was it was, it was, it was, it was a, a tough read, to read yeah, it was it was and the names and everything. Uh, do you have to go soon? If, if not, I think so. I think so. Yeah, like thirty minutes. Like I got probably got like 20, okay, 30 cool. minutes. But okay, but go ahead. Go ahead. Go bring, ahead. Yeah, I want to bring this up because this is one of the most interesting parts uh, for me, and and I think it made a lot of sense for the way that the sacrament and the, this Eucharist, this psychedelic one, really got stomped out. Is when they they talk about. Um, well, this is how they started, but they talk about the the dog sacrifice in Spain, mm -hmm. how they were sacrificing dogs, and which was to Hec Hecate, Hecate, yeah, who was the mother of Circe, who was also like a mother of witches, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And and it's interesting too because I mean that's interesting in itself, but it's interesting that it, well, they talk about it. Um, I don't know. I'm really bad with timelines and centuries and where it took place but when they talk about the witch trials and yeah. like, it was like the final stomping out like this is like they were already slowly stomping out these psychedelics but then their final one was going after these witches and i always thought dude i i, I would very recently especially after i've seen that you've seen the witch right yes Yes, I, I yeah. can't really remember it, too much. But. It's that A24 film and like they live on by the forest and the yeah. baby goes missing. And yeah, 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 yeah. But like ever since that movie, I've been very okay. interested in like witchcraft and shit because I think it's super fucking super interesting. Mm -hmm. But dude, this book gave me a whole new meaning to it. Like, oh shit, like for a while, like I never knew what to believe. I was like, I, I always thought in my mind, I always thought, man, like this is literally just a bunch of dudes who did not like women. And we're accusing them of being witches to just get rid of certain women. But now I'm like, oh shit, like they were kind of witches, but dope witches. Like they were they were healers. Mm -hmm. They were they were trying to show people that oh man, I just spit on my keyboard. That was <laughs> disgusting. But <laughs> they were trying to show people like 
you know, like they still had the formula. They were yeah. mixing up. And like, it just gives me a whole new meaning to thinking about witch cauldrons and any movie I've ever seen about a witch, how they make them look bad. And like these old women who make these crazy That's potions true. that, that wow. hurt people. But really it's like, which is actually, if I feel at least the way they're described in the book, we're actually very beneficial to society and we're actually helping society. And Maria then they were out. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then they were literally stomped out of existence. Mm-hmm. And I like how that's what Brian says. It's like it was the it became the war on women and drugs. You know, yep. it was like because that was like what's it, at least when he talks about it, that's what started all a lot mm-hmm. of this religion was the women mixing these drugs, and then it became first the drugs, and then okay, now we need to get rid of the people who know how to make these drugs. Yep. You know, and it's, it's it's just it's just interesting, man. It's definitely <laughs> interesting to to know that that the me too movement really has even more to stand on and the, <laughs> like oh, damn oh, dude, yeah yeah dude damn. <laughs> holy it, shit y'all go ahead and cancel it. whoever you want you deserve it go ahead queens i hear you <laughs> <laughs> what's up everybody this is Corey from the podcast i just want to let you guys know i'm on instagram um i make music too some new shit should be coming out soon but either way go go over to instagram give me a follow uh my at is at the universe zero one zero one um yeah let's get back to the show <laughs> nah, yeah for sure bro like yeah reading that i was like damn i was like i i was wondering if they were going to talk about it towards the end because they kept talking about cersei and like the witches mm-hmm. and then and then finally they do talk about the witch trials and shit like that and how that was like the final step and mm-hmm. like now we're going to go eradicate it completely we're going to go into your house we're going to pull you out of your house we're going to burn you at the stake and we're going to show you that you can't praise, do this here praise god and, yeah praise <laughs> praise, praise, praise god praise jesus you know like jesus christ C- christianity is evil Dude, it's like, in the beginning they talk about it, uh, which I'm surprised. Well, people probably are pissed, but I remember he talks about it like ISIS in the beginning, how ISIS went through recently and was destroying old artifacts, so then they could replace. Um, it was happening a couple years ago in like Egypt. They were going through and like destroying, or maybe not Egypt, wherever the fuck they were destroying those shit, old shit. Um, so then they could replace it with their own symbols. And that's what he talks about Christianity doing. It's like, okay, we're going to destroy everything else. So it seems like Christianity was the first religion ever, but really there was this religion that was going on way before it. We just don't know much about it because wow. like you said, they burned the libraries, they burned a bunch of shit trying to get in whatever they couldn't destroy. We'll just adopt it, you know? So then wow. it just kind of completely goes away over time or becomes so muddled that it's hard to find the beginning. Yeah. But yeah man it's just uh you know there's a theory that kind of goes coincides with that is that the the great sphinx the one with the water erosion that makes it look like it's uh way older than we think it is um mm-hmm. that the that they uh, that the the head used to be a lion head and was yeah. actually and not a, a a sphinx like it is now and that they re de- recarved it the G- egyptians did or something like that but that it used to be a lion's head and that ancient egypt before it was ancient egypt was ruled by like an ancient African civilization or some weird, oh, like, yeah. Some shit I, like I've, that. uh, I heard, I've heard of that. Uh, when I read, um, I told you about it. Uh, it's, it's a great book, but the Malcolm X, the bio- autobiography of him, oh, okay. uh, he talks about that too. He talks about it in one part that like, he's like, everybody should visit libraries. He says that there's a tons of evidence that they just don't ever talk about, about these African civilizations that were huge that were like, cause we talk about, I think he does talk about that specifically is that Egypt is considered this great, amazing civilization in which it was, Mm -hmm. but he's saying that that even predates it, that there were African civilizations that were huge and really prospered, but you know, they're just not talked about or were stomped out of, of history, you know? And it's crazy to think about it. It goes back to the idea that Egypt was 12,000 years old. And then that would make sense, you know, that there was something else there before. You and know? black people too. Weren't, weren't the Egyptians using African slaves or like uh, to build yeah, the pyramids? I mean, weren't slaves used? Or they were, everybody was African, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. They were, they used slaves to build yeah. everything, you know? So it makes, it's, it makes sense that this civilization was a lot older than we think it is, you know? Yeah. Maybe this um, is a, maybe this kind of coincides with a lot of the things in our DNA as human beings and why like there's all these cultures and i mean movements now 
that are like trying to like you know the me too movement like women's rights black you know black rights maybe there's something in there that speaks to this weird like animalistic sense of being fucking held down because it's just in their dna to be held down as women and as african-american or african black people whatever i don't know if we're I'm, like that kind of is weird because we're all since we would all have come from yeah, there. Yeah, we're all come okay. from yeah. <laughs> okay, no, no, yeah. Right. there. Okay, see, yeah, this is yeah. the weed shit. This is no, no, no. We'll, no, we'll cut that out. No, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, but it does make you think. If we all came from like these people, and if they were practicing maybe psychedelic experiences and stuff, maybe that's why we also all have parts of our brain that that mm. will respond to this too. You know, because our early ancestors were doing it. So we've, because you know, like if you look at evolution and like the concept of evolution things over time evolve because they prove useful to the evolution of a species. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, like, um, they, like they say, we used to have tails or some shit, but you know, eventually that's why we have a tailbone. Eventually the tail Uh went away and now we don't have them because there's no use for them for us. So it would make sense that if we did all come from one people and they were practicing psychedelic experiences, that that's why that part of the brain even exists is because, over time, everybody's brain had to adapt mm-hmm. that because it was something that was deemed important to the survival of us as a species. Did, you know, did you, you know, never know? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Like, like, did you know that the reason that humans have crooked teeth now is because of the boost in agriculture and crops? That, really? the, the, yeah, the reason that our teeth are crooked is because our jaws have actually shrunken down. Because we used to eat hard meats and chew a lot. And because our mouths yeah. have gotten weaker because we learned to grow crops and farm and we eat softer foods, our jaws have gotten weaker. So our mouths have gotten smaller, which has caused our teeth to become crooked. So it's not actually about oral care. It's about evolution. <laughs> if my teeth ever go crooked again, that's what I'm going to say. Well, you know, this is actually evolution. <laughs> Some kid makes fun of you. Hey, crooked teeth. You're like, hey, actually. <laughs> No, dude, the same thing with um, like milk. Uh, they say that m- a lot more people are lactose intolerant now than ever before because now there's no – back in the day, milk was a very important hmm. – very important uh, – I wouldn't say ingredient, but a very important liquid that a lot of people drank. Ah. But over time, milk is not really as important. You can get a lot of those vitamins from other places, and now because of that, slowly uh, – there are a lot more lactose intolerant people now than there were. So they're thinking that slowly we're actually our need for milk's going down. So there's going to be more and more people eventually that just don't ever want to drink milk because they can't, because there's no reason to, there's no reason to need to drink it anymore. So it's like going away, you know, just like the tailbone. There's no reason to have a tail as a human, you know, that'd be kind of weird. It'd be kind of dope though. Me hanging on a tree with my tail. Just have like a personality in your tail. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Oh yeah, we like show your girl you're you're like in the mood just by waking wagging your tail. You know? Wagging. <laughs> oh, he's happy. <laughs> you're about to bust it out. You're like. <laughs> <laughs> but um, nah, dude. Uh, is there anything else though that you want to talk about? Nah, I feel like there's so much shit. There's so in much, yeah, there's so much. I feel like we didn't even cover like half of it. So nah. for people who do have the patience and time, reading mm-hmm. like this is, I wouldn't say it's like the hardest book in the world, but it's mm-hmm. not like reading a story, you know, mm-hmm. when you read a story, you could follow along, but this was hard. Cause I don't know much about languages. And I, I think maybe we had a little bit of pressure on us because we knew we were going to do the podcast. So it wasn't yeah. like we were just reading it to read it. You know, I think maybe that's what made it a little tougher. I will say after I read it, when I watched the podcast yesterday with Brian, uh, I did realize listening to talk, I was like, Oh man, maybe I didn't fully I wasn't fully able to put it into these words, mm-hmm. but I, I understood a lot more than I thought I understood. I, I think, you know, I think there's so much so information there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's there's so, so much info to say one thing, which is cool because yeah. it's, he's used literally using all this data just to prove this one little point. Mm-hmm. So I think that's where I got kind of confused. Like, Oh, I'm missing so much because mm-hmm. I don't understand the data. But then when I watched him talk, I was like, okay, but I'm still understanding the essential points. He's just using the scientific method to show exactly. how he's come to this conclusion, you know, and I'm yeah. not used to, reading stuff like that not yeah. very often and i think you know? i think the ideas are so complicated it legitimately takes time to hold on to them yeah. like they say learning you you requires you to sleep and wake up and you know the, those cycles of sleep actually help you grasp c- concepts and i noticed like as the days went on and i kept thinking and listening to more podcasts i started grasping it a lot more 
So yeah, and then talking about it too, like I'll try to talk about it with Frankie or something, just mm-hmm. because like I feel like once <laughs> I'm able to, yeah, like once I'm able to put it into words and talk about it with somebody, it really does help me understand it more. Because mm-hmm. then I start seeing how I'm presenting it, mm-hmm. and then I can either see if that sounds stupid or if it sounds correct. You know, exactly. It's, it's I told about- I I pulled Monica aside a couple times the last week to just try to explain taught things to her, and she would just be like. And I'd be oh, like, dude, that's exactly how Frankie is. She's like, oh, I don't really be like, oh, not that she don't care. You're like, sure, oh, that's interesting. But like, uh, is it interesting? Doesn't seem like you think it's that interesting. <laughs> We're not explaining it well. I, I got a little yeah. bit. I'm getting better with it. But we did good, man. I'm happy with this podcast. It came out. Oh, well. no. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, good it good. That's why I didn't want to do it last night. I was like, dude, yeah. I'm drinking. Like, I don't want to be like, oh, yeah. you know, stupid and yeah. shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. um, yeah, man. Is there anything else you want to say? That's it. Do you know, uh, what you want to, what, what we're going to do next, next episode yet? Or did you want to do? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do, uh, um, uh, enter the void. Yeah. Hell yeah. And we talked about doing it before. So, and it's about DMT. So, you know, oh, yeah, like that's perfect, true. You know? Yep. let's get into it. I still haven't watched it. It's been sitting here. So maybe oh, I'll yeah. watch it tonight. We'll there see. And we'll, but, yeah. um, but okay, dude, yeah. Man. Uh, the only thing I'd like to say, though, is this book really, really did, though, make me like this. I don't know if we're on the consensus if he's real or not, but it really does make me like the character of Jesus and think, mm-hmm. damn, this tool is a badass motherfucker. Like, I like Absolutely. how you changed your picture to Jesus yeah. on, Instagram. on Instagram. I was thinking I was thinking about posting a picture of Jesus, too. I was like, this boy is badass. Hell like, this yeah. is cool the shit. Like, yeah, dude. He's a revolutionary, you know? And, yeah. like, I just like the idea of him because I guess I always thought like spiritual man, but like I like the idea of thinking now this dude was super intelligent and yeah. ahead of his time. It was mm-hmm. the the that was the problem. He was he was ahead of his time and yep. he was trying to fucking help everybody and not just the one percent. I was like, that's badass. And when it really comes but down that's why to it sucks when, that it's morphed into what it's morphed into, you, you know? Exactly. I think who really fucked it up was John because the only time that Jesus is spoken about doing miracles is through John. According yeah. to my to my understanding, so all the other gospels don't talk about Jesus doing miracles, just John. So I think John was he just took it, you know. Oh, he, did, he 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 was well intentioned, I believe, as well. But I'm yeah. not too sure. So yeah, man. Either way, uh, GGs, bro. GGs. Yeah, GGs. 